It's Fun Friday here on the Locked on Predators podcast. Today's Fun Friday topic, we're going to take the Nashville Predators, some of our beloved players, and we are going to find their TV character counterpart. Uh, we have some references from Happy Days, Pretty Little Liars, all the way down to Stranger Things. And I have been told by my dear colleague, Anne, that one of our answers may be the same. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. Happy Friday, everybody. My name is Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at OnTheForeCheck.com. So it's Friday. Yes. Uh, I'm in the mood for something light. I'm sure a lot of you guys are ready for something light. Looking forward to a fun weekend. Mm -hmm. But we thought we'd do something uh, every Friday here at Locked on Predators here towards the offseason. Just something called Fun Friday. Uh, something completely off the wall, but still hockey related. Uh, that could be something as simple as what we did last week, which is just takes from a hat, kind of a grab mm -hmm. bag of different Preds topics. Uh, or what we're going to do today, which is can we find the TV counterparts mm -hmm. for one of our beloved Nashville Predators? Yes, the amount of research that went into this may rival the amount of research that's gone into some of these report cards full, you know, just, that's just me being transparent. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I am, I am told that we have had a, uh, a quite extensive, I know you have reached out to some family members to get some insight on this. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. I, I bothered my 20 year old son who is a huge Predators fan. And I do have to give him credit because I feel like he nailed the Yakov Trenin. Like we really got that one right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a Yakov Trenin combo too. Ooh. So okay. That's like, um, okay. So, how do we want to do this, Anne? Would you like to start us off? Sure, sure. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the Captain Roman Yossi. And, you know, when I think of Roman Yossi, I think of really great leadership, maybe a little bit unexpected leadership in the NHL. He is quiet. He is steadfast. He leads with um, his character. He leads with integrity. He doesn't scream. He doesn't shout. He doesn't have this, you know, ridiculous ego. He does what he wants his teammates to do. And as I thought about that with Roman Yossi, it immediately made me think of the show Band of Brothers. And I don't, have you seen Band of Brothers? I have not. That's a new one for me. Oh, okay. You need, it's so fantastic. So it debuted in 2001 on HBO. It was a um, production with Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. And it's based on a book called Band of Brothers about Easy Company in World War II. And it follows their story. And their leader is a man named Captain Dick Winters. He ends up being Major Dick Winters. But he leads Great Easy, name. yeah. He leads Easy Company through all kinds of battles, whether they were at Bastogne, whether they were uh, dropped over Normandy, but he leads very Roman Yossi-esque. Like he is just solid. He is steadfast. He is quiet. He is not like um, some of the people who trained him who get in their face and they yell and they scream. Like he's just, yeah. it's just not his gig. So when I think of Roman Yossi, I definitely think of Dick Winters. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to need you to watch this show. Okay. One of the best, probably top three shows I've ever seen in my life. If anything, just to understand this reference. Mm hmm but yeah, I mean, that, that seems like what you described, kind of a Roman Yossi vibe. Yes. You know, lead by an example. We talked about his leadership skills earlier when we were doing his report card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of the quiet reserve, but, you know, everybody is going to know you're kind of the guy in charge when you speak. Everyone listens. Yes. Okay, I can see that as Roman Yossi. Yeah, that's very Roman Yossi-esque. Now you must watch this show. Yeah. So I, good. 
I thought you were going to take uh, a reference to a certain show that I was going to do. Uh, mine is Philip Forsberg. Okay. And when I see Philip Forsberg, you know, he's one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. He's like the cool guy. The guy everybody wants to be. You know, he looks like a cool guy with a little mustache. He's doing oh, all yeah. sorts of awesome off the rink stuff. You know, he's got the uh, the blonde fiance. You know, everybody wants to be Philip Forsberg. And uh, mm -hmm. who's the coolest TV show character? The Fonz. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> Philip Forsberg <laughs> is the Fonz in Swedish hockey player form. Yes. He's okay. Because you think of the Fonz. Like, everybody wants to be the Fonz. Like, everybody wants to hang out with the Fonz. Mm -hmm. you know, in Nashville, it's like Philip Forsberg's like that quintessential cool guy. You know, he does, like, all kinds of cool off-the-ice stuff. True. Uh, you know, he's got, like, the fun personality. You know, he, he did the mustache first. He kind of came out with the mustache. And then, like, all the younger guys, like UC Soros, were started rocking one. Uh, Ellie Tolvanen tried oh, his little, little heart out. Yeah, like just like, you know, Fonz like influenced all like the, you know, the high schooler mm -hmm. like do stuff for him. I feel like Philip Forsberg is that cool influence in the well, Predators locker room. And Fonzie rode a motorcycle and Philip Forsberg has like, is it a scooter? Is, yeah. it, a, is it a moped? It's not a moped. It's a scooter. Oh, yeah. So I can see that. Now, I will tell you this. I also had a Fonzie reference, but okay. mine was for Nashville Predator Mark Borvietsky. And let me tell you why. <clears throat> because, you know, Fonzie was this like tough guy exterior, leather jacket wearing, like everybody was a little bit like afraid to cross him. But what was interesting in that show is that once people got to know him, he really was this loving, kind character. He was, you know, defend, he defended his friends. He was friends with the nerds and all this stuff. And I look at Mark Borowiecki and I'm like, okay, on the surface, looks rough and tough and and he is on the ice i mean he has the most um fights in the nhl mm -hmm. so you know record setter but when you really get to hear from him off of the ice he is this gentle spirit and so it very much reminded me of arthur fonzarelli so, okay yeah who's who's the influence like the guy that uh remember the the doing lip ups on the jukebox at al's diner do you remember that episode doing lip ups yeah. yes comes up and then kiss the jukebox and Al, yes and yes like, You're doing lip ups and Al's like oh never mind i thought you were doing something weird <laughs> okay can i tell you, you my favorite thing about fonzie and happy days my by all favorite me. thing one of the high points of my life, and I have these moments that I put a pin in because I'm like, please let me remember this on my deathbed, was I met Henry Winkler. And they say, oh my gosh, they say don't meet your idols, meet Henry Winkler. So he was at a, um, not a conference, what are they, like a con. He was at a con that I was at. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to stand in line to talk to the Fonz. And of course, my children were like, oh, it's the guy from um, Here Comes the Boom. And I'm like, y'all, there's a lot more to this man than Here Comes the Boom. And I met him and he was hands down the most kind, engaging, funny, sweet person I have ever met in my life. And he smelled incredible. I know that. Hey, you're gonna have to explain that one. Fonzie smells incredible. I don't know what, like, if he was what cologne he was wearing, or if that's just his natural essence. But I'm literally like, heaven smells like Fonzie. No, because Henry Winkler is the shiznit. Like, I I adore Henry Winkler. Like, there is Mark Kimmel, there is Pecorine, and then there is Henry Winkler. Okay. <laughs> so trust me, if you I, ever I get don't near know him, how to segue out of that one. <laughs> if you ever get near Henry Henry Winkler, just breathe in because it's yeah. just 
it's amazing. So let's move on to some other Nashville predators <laughs> before well, this no. gets awkward. <laughs> okay, so you just mentioned Mark Borowiecki. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that you said about him that sort mm-hmm. of, you know, almost misunderstood, you know, yeah. kind of this like, you know, tender, loving figure in a tough guy's body. Mm-hmm. To me, and do you watch The Wire? Maybe I don't. The, maybe one of the best TV shows of all time. Like I would put it in my top five or at least my top five dramas. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. There is a character called Omar Little, played by Mm -hmm. the late, great Michael K. Williams, uh, who is basically, you know, this hardened gangster guy on the street. Um, But he's got some different motivations, you know, than just, you know, normal, you know, kind of surviving the streets of Baltimore. He is a loving guy with a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. He's got a great personality. And the only time he really gets crazy, like the time he really like opens up and becomes that like relentless, ruthless gangster kind of guy is when like somebody messes with somebody close Mm. to him. Like his entire, his entire motivation for season one, all like the revenge and like the murders and stuff like that was because a rival gang killed his boyfriend. And Mm -hmm. then it started messing, you know, and so that was his like revenge plot. And then he got kind of back into the game when somebody started messing with his grandma. Mm -hmm. So it's like he's doing all these like things like he's like this kind of big teddy bear, like this guy, you know, this sort of like deep, complicated person in this sort of like hardened exterior with all these great motivations. But if you cross him, if you touch him, mm-hmm. if you touch any of the Nashville Predators, that big teddy bear known as Mark Borowiecki is going to maul you and he is going to do it ruthlessly. Yes. Yes. I love that. I haven't seen that show, but I feel I like that. you've never seen The Wire. Okay. This whole episode is going to reveal how not cool I am. So this is just yeah. one puzzle piece. Oh, you got to. Like, you got to. Like, it's- okay. Like top five series of all time, like back in the HBO absolute heyday. So you got to watch it. You got to watch The Wire. I will. Uh, Yeah. I I love that about Mark Borowiecki because nobody, you know, people don't talk much about him just because statistically he's just kind of not, you know, somebody that you're going to talk a lot about. But he really does lovingly throw that team on his back and he did it all season long. So I think you nailed that one. That's good. Yeah. All right, so I want to hear more Preds. I want to hear another TV comparison for you. But first, want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including everything you need to know about this year's Stanley Cup Finals, this year's NBA Finals, MLB Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. And BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, everything from live betting, esports, prop bets, and more. So head to the website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So we're doing fun Fridays. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are looking at uh, Nashville Predators and finding their TV character counterparts. Who? Yes. Which TV character embodies the spirit of certain Nashville Predators? Yes. Uh, and continue us. All right, I'm going to jump to everybody's favorite Russian Yakov Trenin. And full disclosure, this was my son's recommendation, and I felt like he was right. So I'm going to go to one of the greatest shows ever on television, Parks and Recreation. Okay. Excellent show. And Yakov Trenin is Ron Swanson. So Ron Swanson is just a man of few words. He has very simple takes in life. He is very direct. He doesn't like inefficiency. He doesn't waste time. He's not about making everybody feel good. He has no fluff. Yakov Trenin is that in a hockey player. He's a pared down hockey player. He doesn't necessarily play with a ton of swagger or panache. You know, he doesn't wax poetic about, you know, his plays. He just gets on the ice 
he does his job and he goes home. And the thing is, he does his job really well. He played 80 games, 17 goals, seven assists, had 24 points, and really came up big for the Predators in big moments when they needed him. Now, had a little bit of a slump at times, but I really feel like Yakov Trenin is your pared down, no nonsense, not taking none of your sass, don't come at me and waste my time with petty Ron Swanson. Okay, I, I can see that. You know, mm-hmm. the, the very sort of straight up vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say Matthias Eckholm. I didn't have this one written down, but Matthias yeah. Eckholm, I feel like, would have been the Ron Swanson kind of vibe. That's a good one. That I also could see that. Because, you know, A, he's got the A plus facial hair uh, to go with Fact. Ron Swanson. Uh, and now, uh, yeah, Nick Offerman has that massive woodsman. Oh, beard. yeah. He's got a whole thing going on. Yeah, I can see that vibe. Like, I can see that vibe from Trennan. Yeah, to me, I would say Ekholm maybe a little bit more just because he's, like, such a central character. Maybe. uh, True. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I can't, I don't, yeah. I can't think of another Parks and Rec character flow for um, Yakov Trennan. So, yeah, no, I can definitely see that. Okay. All right. Who do you have? All right. All right. Who do you have now? So, we have Ryan Johansson. Oh, this what do we is know, tough. What do we know about Ryan Johansson? A, he's really good at what he does, mm-hmm. but he's sometimes misunderstood. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes yep. the people around him uh, in the Predators fan base doesn't think he deserves this kind of status he got. Uh, sometimes, you know, people kind of read too much into his personality, mm-hmm. but he gets the job done. He does. Just like... Michael Scott, <laughs> general manager of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company in Scranton, Pennsylvania, from the office, of course. Yes. Ryan Johansson is Michael Scott in a microcosm. I mean, look, I like Michael it. Scott. Like, hey, he is really <laughs> good at his job. Like, amazing at his job no but but think about it like you know we we see all like the quirky characters and like Uh quirky characteristics and you know accidentally telling everybody uh, about the downsizing and hiding in the office when he's gotta do that so everybody's like oh well he sucks but then like you watch (laughs) episodes like where he goes to um chili's to close that paper deal and Jan, the yes. first Jan really falls in love with him and you see oh my god he's really good at this you yeah. see him go out and like on the road with Dwight and close some of those sales and then it's like oh my god like this is this is a guy who's in his element like he knows what he's doing he cares about the company and that to me screams Ryan Johansson because you hear some of the chatter from Round Prince fan base, you know, he's lazy. He ne- mm. he's never gonna live up to his contract. But then, like, mm. as we did with his report card yesterday, we went into his game and we saw all the intricacies of his game. And we saw it's like, wow, he really is at the core, like a pretty damn good hockey player. Yeah. I can see it. Um, In the sense that I think that people don't necessarily take Ryan Johansson seriously, but, uh, but I think I agree with you. I think at the core, um, Michael Scott is a a boss who loves his people, who loves his job. And, and I think I can see that now here's the thing I really want to see. I want to see Ryan Johansson do prison Mike. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we it it is not probably okay how much we quote prison Mike here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it was quite a different time, two thousand six. Uh, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. It was a whole other thing, and so much like you go back and you watch shows like The Office or you know shows from the nineties, and you're like cringe, cringe, you know, yeah. extra cringe. Yeah, I watch. Yeah. I went back because uh, I'm a big Survivor fan, mm-hmm. uh, and I was like rewatching like the first couple seasons and like some of the social stuff they talk about. And it's like, oh, this oh. is very different than a 2022 conversation that would be. Happening. Yes. Uh, but... Now, I will tell you, I also had an Office character reference. All right, let's hear. I it. did. Um, Mikhail Granlund mm. is Jim Halpert. 
Okay. So you have Jim Halpert. Jim Halpert is kind of considered to be this average guy, you know, just your everyday regular Scranton knight. Um, but he ends up sort of being the heartbeat of Dunder Mifflin. Like, you know, you have Dwight who's like brashly confident and like always up, you know, challenging people. But Jim just sort of easily, flawlessly sets Dwight up for prank after prank. And for me, that is, um, that is Mikhail Granlund. Like Mikhail Granlund is never going to be PK Subban. Like you're never going to see this huge, you know, Dwight like personality out of Mikhail Granlund. But you look at what he did this season and he's so smoothly and easily, it looks effortless how he sets things up. And he is in the end, you know, you look at his career high in assists and you then look at the seasons that Forsberg and Duchesne had and you're like, okay, he is a little bit the heartbeat of the success of the Nashville Predators. And so I'm like, he just seems like your average hockey player. But when you really look at what he does, he is Jim Halpert. He gets the girl. He gets Pam in the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could see. I could. I would say, like, if you're going by office characters, maybe he's more of the Oscar. Like the guy that's like, no, he's not the salesman. Huh. He's like the guy behind the scenes, but like, yeah. you know, super good financially. Um, I had a different one from Mikhail Granlund. Okay. And you're gonna have to see this from like the view of the. Um, opposing team okay uh, i am not sure and if you're familiar with the show pretty little liars i have not seen that one either i was, I was gonna ask like maybe if it was your kids miss that era or something yeah like that. um but yeah the the secret character a a is like the mystery person who is always causing chaos, always one step ahead of mm -hmm. everybody else, but they're working in the dark. Nobody really knows who they are. Um, and we still really didn't get a good explanation at the end of the series for who. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're like working in the shadows. And to me, that's Mikhail Granlund because mm -hmm. we talked about this when we did his report card just this past week, how it just always seems like we're over like, you know, underestimating what Mikhail yes. Granlund did this season just mm -hmm. because there's so many more prominent people ahead of him. But then you go back and watch the game. It, just like a is always in the middle of like every scheme mikhail granlin's like always in the middle of like every goal whether he gets yes. for like an assist or not on defense you know if um there is like a really good you know defensive play defensive clear like they shut down at sort of an attacking play you look and then there's mikhail granlin either if, even if he's not like making the play itself to get the puck loose uh his in like a perfect position to cut down a passing lane. He's got a guy covered. He's always there working in the shadows, causing chaos. Yes. I like that because Mikhail Granlin really does play chess on the ice. He really yeah. is kind of behind the scenes moving things along. So I, I do not disagree with that, even though I've not seen the show, but I believe your yeah. description. Yeah. And yeah. you have, yeah. And he seems to be the guy that always, you know, you mentioned playing chess. He's always mm -hmm. seems to be the guy that's like one step ahead. Yes. Like you can almost see him. He's like, when he makes a play, he calculates like two, three plays ahead. Like if the mm -hmm. puck's going here, then this person's going to go here and this person's going to go here. So if I go here, then I'm going to be in the perfect place yes. to stop this play. So yes. it's always like he can see two things ahead, just like A can always kind of be one step ahead of everybody. I like else. that. All, All right, right. So we still have some more players that we need to talk about, still have some more TV shows that we need to kind of compare. All right. So let's talk. All right. You do one. Pick, pick a player and, and, and tell me who you have. Who, right. Who's their TV e alter ego? Well, we have UC Saros. Okay. The the little quiet Finnish man. Yes. The little, the little child of Pecorine. Yes. The lost cut kid. Uh, who completely has magical powers that destroy literally everyone from the other team. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what kind of demonic 
monster performances the other team has, UC Saros is going to bail out the Nashville Predators. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, folks, that is just like 11 from Stranger Things. UC Saros is 11 from Stranger Things. First off, he's got the very, like, quiet, almost shy demeanor about Mm -hmm. him. Like, you know, you would never look at UC Saros and be like, he's this big, colorful personality. Right. He's like, he's just like an adorable little kind of quirky child. Like, even, (laughs) yeah, like, even like, look at his, like, look at his like team photo from this year. It looks like an awkward eight year old who's doing like the fake mustache. Oh, yeah. Like a police officer day at school. And, it's like a bad middle school yeah. phase. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you underestimate. You wouldn't look at him and be like, oh, yeah, like there is definitely something like absolutely outer worldly about him. And right. And then the Demigorgons attack. The Colorado Avalanche, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Calgary Flames, all these teams start descending upon Hawkins, yeah. a.k.a. Bridgestone Arena, and just start throwing all these shots at them like shot after shot after shot and you're thinking it's like there is absolutely no way the predators are going to steal a win there's no way Mm -hmm. these random like 13 year old D &D players are going to be (laughs) able to take down a well-oiled machine from the rocky mountains of colorado and then poof hey look here's this small finnish goalie child yeah, who is going to absolutely close the door behind him and just yeah. stonewall every single shot you go and poof, all of a sudden, yep, you may have absolutely nearly decimated the Nashville Predators, but thanks to the small little child in UC Saros, we have stolen a win. Just like everybody in Hawkins uh, that we care about is still alive <laughs> in Stranger Things. Yeah. Owls heroics. Okay. F- never seen Stranger Things. Oh. I know. I told you this is just revealing my uncool. Yeah. My kids have watched it. So I've walked through a room where it's on, but I have never watched it. Well, I can't say too much about this season because uh, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, okay. you, you should go back and watch it. Good uh, good revival season for Kate Bush and 80s music. Oh, I do like that about it. I love that it's set in the 80s. But here's my UC Soros question for you. Just these are the things that keep me up at night and, and make me wonder. So let's just say that UC Soros played exactly the same as he played this season. Exactly mm-hmm. the same as he played this season. But he was 6'2". Do you think people would still underestimate him? No. Yeah. See, I feel like it's all about that. I really yeah. do. Yeah, it's all about height. Like it's like dating apps. NHL <laughs> scouts. Yeah, NHL scouts are like shallow people on dating apps where it's like, mm-hmm. "Hey, you're not above 5'10." Oh, sorry, swipe right. Swipe. Yeah. Swipe okay. Left. But whatever. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I don't know which way you swipe. All right, let's talk about Tanner Janot. I got a good one for Tanner Janot, but I, don't I know do yours. too. I think now Tanner Janot came into the season, still a rookie, only played 15 games in the NHL. So he was, you know, young coming into the season, just a little wet behind the ears. Um, He's a big player, of course, but I don't necessarily think anybody thought he would turn into the absolute physical machine that he was. He had 318 hits this season, second highest in the entire NHL. Of course, he did have 130 penalty minutes, but let's not judge. He had the most fights in the league. Mark Borowiecki was behind him. And he lost very few fights that I can remember. Tanner Janot is this person who you thought was just this young little rookie coming in, and he really was a beast. And it reminds me of Walter White from Breaking Bad. Ooh. And one particular scene you know, one scene in particular where he is talking to his wife and she's kind of freaking out, like, maybe we should go to the police. They'll understand you were this teacher with cancer and you were under stress and da, 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 da. And he looks at her and he says, who are you talking to right now? 
Yeah. Who is it you think you see? You clearly don't see who, you clearly don't know who I am. So let me clue you in. I am I not am the one who knocks. Yes, I am not danger, Skylar. I am the danger. I am the one who knocks. Yeah. And I'm like, that is Tanner Janelle. Like, I think all of these people are like, yeah, we'll take on this, you know, rookie who thinks he's something and we'll show him who's boss. You know what? Tanner Janelle is the one who knocks. Tanner Janelle is the one who <laughs> knocks. <Scott. laughs> yeah, that should be a t-shirt. Just throwing it out there. Tanner Janot is the one who knocks. He is not who you think he is. He is not some timid NHL rookie who is, you know, just sort of getting his feet wet. Like he is Walter White. He is running the empire. Do not mess with him. Don't. He is the danger. <laughs> so mine for Tanner Janot is Raylan Givens from Justified. Another one of my and I know, oh. I know, I know. I'll it's add it to too. the list. But if you haven't seen Justified, you gotta see Justified. Raylan give it so he's the Timothy Oliphant character, the the Kentucky Marshal who's got like the big cowboy hat. Ooh, but he is like a the worst <laughs> law enforcement officer ever because he's <laughs> like an 1880s cowboy where he like goads people into trying to gunfight with him and then just poof like fastest gun <laughs> this side of hazard kentucky yeah uh, and he is that vibe where he has all this swagger and he can get away with like antagonizing all these characters and harlan like all mm -hmm. like like the southern mob members and uh, you know anybody who comes from like out of town or stuff like that he can mess with them because he knows he can back it up just like tanner Janot can go out there and play an absolute fearless game yes. he can throw his body around he can go out doesn't matter if you're like the fourth line enforcer on the other team or if you're the number one center the superstar tanner Janot knows he can go out there and play his game against you be as physical as he wants because it doesn't matter what they throw at him. It doesn't matter like what, you know, goon, you know, what hired henchman is going to come off the bench to try to go after Jano and like get retribution. Jano knows he could probably drop him. Mm -hmm. he He's can. Got that confidence. And he does it all with such a swagger that I think oh, yeah. the Predators desperately need that makes him like a perfect anti hero in Nashville. Yeah, I would say he's got big Raylan Givens energy. All right, what is that show name again? It's Justified. Justified. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, I will add it to the A plus characters. Okay. You got to do it. All right, let's let's do one more each, and we'll do these real quick. Okay, so a show that I don't know if you've watched, but you must watch is The West Wing. Have you watched The West Wing? I've watched a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All it's my all time favorite show. All time favorite show for sure. Um, and John Hines is Leo McGarry, who is the chief of staff. The West Wing is literally about um, the Bartlett administration in the White House. And Leo McGarry is the chief of staff. And it's his job to take the direction from President Bartlett and sort of oversee that it happens. But he also, you know, it's not just a nuts and bolts thing. Like he also has to sort of, um, lead these characters in different ways based on their personalities or what areas they're working in. And he knows how to, you know, mobilize them and inspire them. And there's nobody in that White House who wouldn't fall on a sword for Leo McGarry. And I feel like that's John Hines. Like he walked into a hot, steaming dumpster fire of a mess and, you know, figured out what, you know, David Poyle was kind of thinking and seeing, and he has been putting together the nuts and bolts of it, but he's also been doing it a lot off of the ice. Like, I feel like so much of his early work in Nashville has been off ice work, kind of, um, kind of getting a cohesive group and moving everybody in the same direction. And I think he's gotten to a point where there is not a Nashville predator who wouldn't fall on their sword for John Hines. So he is Leo McGarry. Interesting. I have not, uh, yeah. I, I again don't know much about West Wing, so but based okay. on what you said, mm -hmm. I can kind of see that. Yeah. So, all right. Who is your last one? Who do uh, you have? My last one. It's a duo, 
I'm oh, I go. like this. So we just had Sissons. I'm going mm-hmm. to go uh, back to the other two members of the herd line, Colton Sissons and Yakov Trenin. That is Scully and Mulder from the X. <laughs> because you look, Colton Sissons to me is Scully because, mm-hmm. you know, she's kind of like the no nonsense person of that group. Like yes. she does her job extremely well. Like she's like the paranormal, like skeptic. Uh, if there is such a thing in the X-Files. Like, she's, like, kind of, like, the hard and, like, traditional by-the-book kind of person. Uh, and then you have Mulder, who's mm-hmm. David Duchovny's character, and he's just out there, like, messing with everything. He's just, like, the like the guy who, like, goes and he, like, kicks his feet up at the desk, like, the stereotypical, like, you know, played loose by the rules kind of guy. Yeah. That's Yakov Trenin. Yakov Trenin is the guy that goes on the ice to messes up your world. Yes. Like just F your S up. <laughs> also like another good Throwing his body out there, all that. And Colton Sissons is like the, I guess I'm going to have to stay here and win face-offs and kill off these penalties routinely. Yeah, so he, he's like the guy who's like rolling his eyes in the background. It's Yakov trying to is going out there. Like, <laughs> I just picture him shouting, "We!" Is he just like? <laughs> his I I love that. I love. I will tell you, from purely non statistical, you know, heart standpoint, Yakov Trenin is a delight for the Nashville Predators. He is a delight. And I love when he scores a goal and jumps into the glass. Like, I don't need yeah. more than that. That's yeah. amazing. It's better than Alex Radiloff jumping uh, into your team captain. Yes. And yeah, potentially injuring him. Yeah, that's yeah. not great. Yeah. All right. So to wrap up, the shows you need to watch are Band of Brothers and The West Wing. And the shows I need to watch are Stranger Things, Justified, and there was one more. Uh, the Wire. The Wire. Okay. Uh, the Wire's the one I can't believe you haven't heard of. Oh my gosh, I'm not cool. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you can be cool someday. Just kidding. You're cool in my book. Well, thank you very much. So, well, we have our assignment for the weekend, I guess. We do. Well, I'll be out of town, but I'm sure okay. some, someday I'll catch up on TV. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Next week, uh, we'll take a look at some free agent options. Mm-hmm. Nashville Predators, uh, of course, we'll continue with our off-season report cards. Talk NHL draft coming up, and we'll also talk to some of our counterparts from around the Central Division. That's all coming up this summer. So again, just because the Predators season is over doesn't mean there's not anything to talk about. So make sure you're t- tuning in to the Lockdown Predators podcast uh, every single weekday during the NHL playoffs and NHL offseason because we will keep you up to speed. Until then, though, Anne, where can the people find your work online? You can find my work at ontheforecheck.com and you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can find my work at ontheforecheck.com as well. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. And while you're there, make sure you follow our podcast at LO underscore Predators. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let us know what TV character you think encapsulates your favorite Nashville Predator. Interesting to hear your responses on this one. That's going to do it for us today on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back next week with all new episodes. See you then.